Many years ago, humanity used the pigeon post to deliver mail from A to B. Pigeons play the role of API, which is called when somebody wants to send a message. Modern technologies allow us to fill out a simple form and order a pizza in a few seconds. Today, I will teach you how to create a form in your Next.js website and send the form data directly to the email using recent API. Let's start! First, we need to install the Next.js application using the following command. Complete configuration questions and hit enter. After the installation is successful, run our project to ensure everything is OK. And it works. Now we need to remove the pre-installed markup inside the page.js because I will implement the form structure here. Also, I would like to clean up all global CSS in our project. OK, let's start with the very first form markup implementation. I will create a form with the tag legend inside. After, I use the tag field set to group form inputs. Now we can add the first input type text here. With the name and placeholder attributes. Next, just clone it and replace the attributes data. It is going to be the last name field. The same action is taken with the email input. And finally, we can create a text area element for a client message. At the end of our form, I add a simple submit button. Our G6 template is ready. The next step is styling. I will use CSS modules here to keep my project simple, but feel free to use any styling you want. CSS modules work very easily. You just need to import the styles object and pass a required class name as a styles key. I will start with the top level container styling. Call it hero and add a mean height property. Make it a flex container and put all child components on the page center. After, set ground image and background size cover to fill all available space. Now let's style our form. Set the class name form to the JS6 element and go to the CSS file. Define the class form, set the max width property and add some patterns. I'd like to blur the background behind the form so I should use big drop filter here. Round corners with the border radius and add border value. Finally, I'm going to use box shadow And the form is ready now. After, let's style our title. Nothing special here, just specify font size, text color, font weight and margin. Also, put the text in the center using the text align property. I will add the group class name to the field set element to remove the default border here and make it flex. OK, we are ready to make input fields look pretty. For this, I am going to use input and text area class names. The styles for these fields are very similar, so I'll set the CSS properties for both of them. Set the flex basis property to make inputs full width, remove the background color and add mean height 42 pixels. I'd like to add a little spacing with the margin bottom and set 8 pixels patterns. The text color will be like yellow light or something like that. Using the border property, we can render the bottom line of our inputs. Turn off default outlines and set transition property to make future hover and focus effects a little smoother. And don't forget to reset default borders. OK, done. Now let's quickly switch to placeholder styling. It's pretty easy. Just need to specify color and font size. After, I will create a simple hover and focus effect by changing the border color property. Good. The final step of our styling is the submit button. 
make it flex and center the content inside using Justify Content and Align Items Pro. Add mean height and don't forget to pass a class name to the J6 element. OK, go back to the bottom. I will make it a full size also and declare a ground color here. Set patterns, font size, margin top, and font weight properties. Round corners with border radius, and that's it. Now let's jump to the recent API. As I said at the start of the video, we are going to use this service to send our form data directly to the email. You need to create an account here and go to the API Keys tab to generate a new API key. After, we should store it somewhere, so I suggest you to create a .env file and put an API key inside with the following name. Now OK. We will come back to the key a little later because now I would like to create an email template component. So I strongly recommend you follow my code here because it's very easy to get unexpected errors during email send execution. I defined the email template component with four props. Every single prop matches a form field name. Now let's make a basic layout of our email. It will contain a title and a couple of paragraphs to render every prop value. The left part of the paragraph is going to represent the data label, and the strong tag is for value. We should clone the first paragraph for all other cases and replace labels and values. OK, it seems good. Now we can start to write some email sending logic. There are two ways in Next.js to implement it server side with server actions and the client side with API root. I picked the last one for this tutorial. Before we start, we should install a recent package to our project. So, we should open recent docs and find the example for Next.js. Scroll down to the sending part and copy the following code. After that, let's create an API root inside our application to call it for email send. According to the Next.js doc, I create an API folder, send folder with a root.js file inside. And paste our code here. It is going to be our endpoint. We should specify a correct pass here to our email template component and make sure that the name of the API key environment variable matches ours. OK, looks good. Now I would like to write form data serializing logic. So, as I said before, we need to specify for Next.js on the top level of the file that we are going to work with form on the client side. Also, we should import the useState hook here. Now I declare a const, and it will be an initial value for our form fields. I define it as an object with four keys. Every key matches input or text array name attribute, and its initial value will be an empty string. After, I create a state using the useState hook with the initial value prop to control our form data. Now I need to link every input value with a certain state key. It's pretty easy to do here. OK, done. Finally, we can create a handler function to call it on every input change to update the input value in our state. It will be a narrow function with an event argument inside, and all we have to do is to update our state with a new input value. Now we can put this handler as a callback inside the onChange event of every input. Good, let's check how it works. As you can see in the console, we get a new input value for every onChange action. And it works correctly for every input. Nice, let's go back to code. Now when we store the form data inside the state, we can try to send it using our API. So to do it, I define a new async function with an event argument. First of all, I will cancel the default submit form event to prevent page reloading using the event.preventDefault method. And let's make this function a submit handler for our form. OK. By the way, I would also like to make first name and email fields required here. 
to implement a very small form validation. So I just pass an asterisk symbol to placeholders, and after that I should check on every form submit, first name or email value. And if one of them is empty, just return from the callback. Basically, the form validation is a very important part, and it must be strict in most cases. So I recommend you add more validation rules here, but I skip this part to keep my tutorial simple. Next, we can write our email sending request using fetch. It is a good practice to wrap a request in the try catch block. So I start exactly with it. In the catch block, I catch an error argument to process it later. Now let's declare a response constant where we can write the result of our fetch request. We should specify the path of our endpoint that we built before. I need to pick the request method inside, so it will be the post method here, and we need to provide the data to a body and wrap it to the json.stringify method. Let's go back to our API file and pass a request argument inside. This is how we can extract form data from the request body here. Now we can read every form field value from the body object as a key and provide it to our email template. Or you can use object destructor instead. Okay, I also add a fallback in case the field value is empty. And just do it for every field. In this example, I just want to get messages from my website form directly to my email. So I just need to replace the to prop value with my email. Good. Now it's time to make the first sending attempt. Just complete our form with fake data and hit the submit button. We can see on the network tab that the request was completed successfully, and we got an email transaction ID inside the response object. Now I can open my email tab and see that the email is here. Great! Moreover, you can find your email transaction in the recent account. Now I'd like to improve the user experience of our interface. I just want to notify the user of the status of the email sent. For this, I'm going to use a simple React Toastify library. Install it with the following command, import all necessary components and styles. Now we can get back to our handle submit function and clear the form data. After that, I'd like to extract the transaction ID from the recent API response and show it inside our notification message. So if I have response data, I should call the toast success method and put a message text about a successful sending to it with the transaction ID. In the error case, I just want to show an error notification with a warning message inside. To make notifications work, we should also add Toast container to our page. Good. Now is the time for the final test. Fill out the data, hit the submit button, and there we go. Our notification works perfectly. I have also noted that I forgot to write some CSS rules for the text area element. So let's go back to the styles and add the mean height property and cancel the ability to resize it. Okay, the last section here is to disable a submit button while the email is sending to prevent multiple clicks. To do it, I define one more state here and call it is fetching, with the default value being false. I will change it to true before invoking our API request. and return it to the false at the end of the function. Now I can use this flag as a disable prop for our submit button. Let's check how it works. You can see that the submit button was disabled for a couple of seconds, and the email sending flow is still working. Great! Subscribe if you like my content.